Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about the embryological development of the pancreas and we're going to break it down so simply so that any beginner to embryology will be able to understand it by the end of the video. It's a specifically designed for medical students, uh, people who don't know what embryology is or if someone is looking to revise the high yield points of uh, pancreatic development. I recommend that if this is your first embryology video you have ever watched, I recommend that you go back and watch my introduction to embryology video just so that you know everything that's going on and you can put this video in better context. But I'm going to make this video in a way so that you don't really need to do that. Even if this is your first video that you're watching about the embryology, you will be able to understand pancreas uh, development. Okay, so let's begin at the beginning. Initially, the two cells from your mum and your dad fused and become a blastula. This ball of cells moves down into the uterus and implants onto the wall. That implantation through a process of gastrulation forms three layers. You, you were initially three layers on top of each other. So if this is a uterus wall, this is you. Three layers on it like this. Those three layers are the endoderm, outside, mesoderm, middle, endoderm inner but then you're thinking probably why is endoderm inner but it's still flat it should be under right it's inner because eventually it will fold and will become your inner what bits of your inner if you've seen any embryo embryology lecture video even if you don't know what it is you have seen this. This is a simplification for this, where we have your ectoderm, your mesoderm, and your endoderm. It's color coded. Your ectoderm will become your skin as it folds around and your central nervous system. The mesoderm becomes a lot of things. They're made up of other parts as well. So you have your paraxial mesoderm, intermediate mesoderm, and your lateral plates. They become things like muscles, heart, etc. We'll save that for another video because today's focus is on endoderm, the green, your inner. And just for illustration purposes, you don't have to understand what this is. It's just to understand the folding process. So this Pokemon looking thing, its mouth is your GIT. It folds in a way so that this is your GIT. And because we have dorsal aorta here and endothelial tubes, it's probably at the level of thorax. So this is most likely either esophagus or stomach. Okay, this is your central nervous system. That's the skin. And this in red, don't even worry about it. It's not today's focus. It's mesoderm. They make up your other internal organs. But your pancreas is derived from this. And this is a cross section. So if we were to flip it up, just let's flip it up. You'll get this. So this is a coronal view. And over here we have your GIT in green. And the dilatation is the stomach. And as we go further down, there's the duodenum, which isn't yet in its C shape. We have the liver here in red, although it's not 100% mesoderm. It's made up of endoderm and mesoderm. But embryology of the liver is for another video. Here we have the gallbladder, which is joined to the hepatic duct by the cystic duct, and then the hepatic duct down to the um, GIT. And this is the important part, first high yield point. Pancreas comes from endoderm, more specifically from duodenal tissue. So the two pancreas buds come off the endoderm, duodenum, and point two is that they are initially two buds. The ventral pancreatic bud and the dorsal pancreatic bud. Okay. With that said, how does it become one pancreas? What happens is that the GIT, the stomach, rotates to sit in its final position. As it is rotating, and the direction that it's rotating, if you're looking from the top, is clockwise. So if we were gonna look from up here, like this, if this is your stomach, cross section here, and that's the ventral pancreatic bud, 
and that's your dorsal pancreatic bud, it rotates this way. So clockwise, if you're looking at it from the top. So they're rotating and the ventral comes down and it sits inferior and posterior to the dorsal pancreas. Now focusing our attention over here, we'll have its uh, location before the ducts fuse. This is around week six. Ventral pancreas sits below and behind the dorsal pancreas. And the ventral pancreas makes up the unconnect process and the inferior part of the head of the pancreas. The dorsal pancreas makes up the rest of the gland or the organ, rest of the organ. As well, you'll see the bile duct, which becomes the cystic and hepatic duct and the gallbladder. Okay. It's moving on from here where we have still two separate ducts at the end of rotation. We'll have the beginning of the fusing of the ducts. So what happens is that once it rotates and meets underneath and behind the dorsal, the ducts fuse to become a main pancreatic duct, a accessory pancreatic duct, which isn't always present, and a ventral pancreatic duct, and your ampulla of vata, this being your major papilla, where the sphincter of body is, and this being your minor papilla. And not all people have this accessory pancreatic duct. And again, the ventral pancreatic duct makes the un un unconnect process and the inferior part of the head of the pancreas. It's that simple. To recap, a quick summary, your pancreas comes from endoderm. The pancreas, two buds, come off duodenal tissue. The ventral rotates, meets the dorsal and sits under and behind it. The ducts fuse. That's it. And you have your pancreas. If you have any questions or if you want more detail about this process, leave a comment below, I'll answer it. But if you want me to answer you real quick, send a message to, uh, on, to me on Facebook. I answer all those questions. And more than happy for you to follow me there as well uh, so that you can keep up to date with the videos. And I'll also post this as a printable picture on the Facebook page so that you can have it for your notes if you want. And I got a request to talk about abnormalities in development in my videos. So for this video, I'm going to talk about a specific pancreatic abnormality called the annular pancreas. So we already spoke about how the ventral pancreatic duct moves around and rotates and meets the dorsal pancreas and then they fuse. In an annular pancreas, if we have the ventral uh, pancreas here with the GIT here and the dorsal pancreas here, again with this configuration, so looking at it uh, like this, if you're looking down, normally this rotates here like that, right? And it sits behind it. But sometimes what can happen is that the ventral pancreas splits into its two parts. One of them goes the right way, one of them goes the wrong way. And what you'll have is you'll have pancreatic tissue surrounding the duodenum, which can cause a stenosis of the duodenum. And the stenosis can cause a complete obstruction, which is a medical emergency, and it could, cost the life, could be at the cost of the life of the fetus. So, what happens is that the right side of the uh, the right side of the ventral pancreatic bud goes right, and the left side goes left, and so it surrounds the duodenum, constricting it, and that's the annular pancreas. Thank you for watching. See you next time.